Greetings and welcome back. This is your boy Kamal once again, and today we have a very interesting log integral. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of log square x times 1 plus x squared over 1 plus x to the fourth power dx. Okay, cool. So our solution development begins by multiplying out the log term and then making use of the linearity of the integration operator. So that gives us one integral from 0 to infinity of log square x over 1 plus x to the fourth power dx plus another integral from 0 to infinity of x squared times log square x over 1 plus x to the fourth power dx. And we'll adopt the Feynman's trick approach here and define the integral function i of the parameter alpha as the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the alpha over 1 plus x to the fourth power dx. And the reason for this is pretty simple. If you differentiate this thing with respect to alpha, then that yields i prime of alpha on the left and on the right after switching up the order of the integration and differentiation operators. We have the integral of the partial derivative with respect to alpha of x to the alpha, terribly sorry about that, that looked like alpha to the alpha. And we have this thing in the denominator. So carrying out the differentiation gives us x to the alpha times log x divided by 1 plus x to the fourth power dx. And that means we actually have recovered a log term, but we need another logarithm to get log squared. So we'll just differentiate this thing again and get the second derivative of i equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the alpha times log square x over 1 plus x to the fourth power dx. So that means our target integral i equals the second derivative of the integral function at alpha equal to 0 plus the second derivative at alpha equal to 2. Okay, cool. So that means we have a plan. We just need to differentiate the integral function, the integral function twice and then plug in the required values of alpha. But that plan only works when we actually have a closed form for our integral function, which thankfully we do using a result that I derived a while back, link in the description box. The integral from zero to infinity of x to the s minus one over one plus x to the k dx converges to pi over k times the cosecant of pi s over k. Now for our case, we have k equal to four and we have s minus one equal to alpha, meaning that s here is just alpha plus one, which means our integral function i of alpha expressed as the integral from zero to infinity of x to the alpha, terribly sorry about that, over one plus x to the fourth power dx equals pi over four times the cosecant of pi over four times alpha plus one. And now all we need is to differentiate this thing. So differentiating with respect to alpha yields pi over four times the derivative of the cosecant function. That would be negative cosecant times cotangent. So we have a negative sign here and we have cosecant of pi alpha over four plus pi over four times the cotangent of pi alpha over four plus pi over four. And of course, by the chain rule, we also have an extra factor of pi over four, which means I'll just write this thing as pi over four squared. And now differentiating again to get the second derivative, that means we need to apply the product rule. So we have this constant term outside and now we have cosecant times cotangent. Again, cosecant's derivative is negative cosecant times cotangent. So that means we have cosecant pi alpha over four plus pi over four times cotangent square pi alpha over four plus pi over four. And finally, we have cosecant times the derivative of the cotangent, which is negative cosecant. So that means we have minus cosecant cube pi alpha over four plus pi over four. And of course we could factor out a negative one and remember that we have to apply the chain rule 
giving us another factor of pi over 4, so that's pi over 4 cubed, and canceling out the negatives here, so we have this expression. Okay, cool. So the only thing left is to evaluate the second derivative at alpha equal to 0 and alpha equal to 2. So first up for alpha equal to 0, we have pi cubed over 64 times the cosecant of pi over 4. Terribly sorry about that. So we have cosecant pi over 4 times cotangent square pi over 4 plus cosecant cube pi over 4. Now, cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine, and sine pi over 4 is just 1 over root 2, and the cotangent of pi over 4 is 1, just like the tangent. So that means we have pi cubed over 64 times root 2 plus, okay, so that's 2 to the 3 halves, which is, of course, 2 times root 2, which means we can factor out root 2 and get pi cubed over 64 times root 2 times 1 plus root 2. That looks pretty nice. So that's one of the second derivatives. And the other value of the second derivative is that at alpha equal to 2. I'm just going to copy this down so I don't mess anything up. So copy there and paste here. So we have i double prime at alpha equal to 2 equal to, again, pi cubed over 64. And now we have cosecant of all of these pi alpha over 2 terms turn into pi over 2s. So we have cosecant pi over 2 plus pi over 4 times cotangent square pi over 2 plus pi over 4 plus, of course, the... Uh, what is this thing called? The cosecant cube. The cube of the cosecant. Terribly sorry, I forgot how to talk for a moment. Anyway, so this is cosecant cube, pi over 2 plus pi over 4. Now, I am horrible at basic arithmetic, so I'm not going to add the fractions, I'm just going to use phase shifting over here. So, sine of pi over 2 plus something would be negative, no wait, that's positive cosine. So we have pi cubed over 64. Yeah, that's right, kids. When you're bad at fractions, just learn trigonometry. That'll get you sorted. Moral of the story here. Anyway, so we have secant of pi over 4 times tangent square pi over 4 plus uh, cosecant cubed, which is, yeah, just secant cubed pi over 4 now. And wait, I think I'm missing... I'm missing something. I am missing something. Cosecant pi over 2. Uh, have I got the expansion right in my head? Yeah, that is correct. And why am I getting a sign error? Or am I getting a sign error? Wait, let me check my notes. Oh no, I'm not getting a sign error. See kids, I told you. Once once you know that you're not cut out for adding fractions, you just learn trigonometry and everything falls into place beautifully. I thought I was getting a sign error somewhere, but turns out I just had the wrong result in mind. Anyway, so this thing is pi cubed over 64 times root 2 times 1 plus 2 times root 2 again, which equals, and now that I think of it, I have made an error. Yeah, I am horrible at basic arithmetic. I'm I'm absolutely horrible at it. This thing is supposed to be 3 times root 2. What is wrong with me? Oh, yeah. I solve tough integrals. How in the world am I supposed to know this stuff? Really advanced stuff, guys. I mean, I'm very sorry. I'm still not at this level of mathematics yet. So I'm just going to... I can't even explain it. I'm just going to deus ex machina this and call it 3 times root 2. So we have pi cubed over 64 times 3 times root 2 here again. And this implies that the target integral equals twice this result. So we have 2 pi cubed over 64 times 3 times root 2. Cancellation happening. Again, I don't know how that happens. I'm just writing it out. I'm just winging it at this point. I'll probably learn that someday. And we have 3 pi cubed 
root 2 over 32. A pretty nice result indeed. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.